This video is going to go over the graphing problems and transformation problems on this review. So when we're looking at this particular graph, um, if you want to plug this into Desmos, you can. But we're looking for the asymptote, the domain, and the range. The asymptote of a log function is a vertical line. So the side-to-side -side movement is what really affects the asymptote. So because this graph moves left 1, the asymptote is at x equals negative 1. The domain, the only time that the domain symbol switches is if there's a negative in front of the x inside the parentheses. So because this set of parentheses does not have a negative in front of that x, the domain is x is greater than whatever your asymptote value is. And the range, that's the sarcastic, super difficult part. The range is all real numbers. So in EdSight, you're just going to type in a capital R for all real numbers. Part B, you're selecting the graph of the function. The asymptote is supposed to be at negative 1. So what I would do is look at negative 1, x equals negative 1 on all of these graphs. Okay, this last graph crosses that asymptote, so that's definitely not right. Um, these first two are farther away, so that's not right. This one is the correct one. There's another video that goes over all of the rewriting, evaluating, and the inverse. The next thing I'd like to go over with you is this table. Describe the transformation for each graph below. Select all that apply. I'm going to write underneath here y equals positive or negative a times the log base b of positive or negative x minus h plus k. The plus minus in front of the a, so whether it's positive or negative depends on if there's a reflection or not. But basically, anything that happens in front of the log is going to be one of these three things. So the first three columns of this table are entirely what happens with A. If there is a negative sign in front of the X, that is going to be a reflection across the Y axis. A reflection across the Y axis is a horizontal reflection. Anything that happens inside the parentheses is horizontal transformation, either horizontal movement or horizontal reflection. So I'm also going to add that a reflection across the x-axis, or across the y-axis, is a horizontal reflection. A, a reflection across the x-axis is a vertical reflection. Next up is the minus h. The minus h is going to tell you if this graph moves left or right. And then the plus k is the translation up or down. That's when the graph moves up or down. Now that I have my color scheme fully done, some massive hints about this table. Each line is going to have two things. Each of these equations has two things happening in it only two things. So each line will have two x's. Each column is going to have only one x. So if there's a vertical shrink in one of these, there isn't going to be a vertical shrink in any of the others. So that can help you to kind of narrow it down. If there's one equation that you're a little bit unsure of, you're going to be able to narrow it down and kind of figure out what, what you have left. So in the first one, we've got a one-third in the front. Anyone want to take a guess what the one-third in the front does? It is a vertical shrink. If that number was a bigger number, like two, three, four, anything bigger than one, it would be a vertical stretch. So if you want to look through here, you might notice that this last one has a four in front. That one is going to be the vertical stretch. If I'm going to go, ver I'm just going to go kind of crazy on here. Um, if there is a negative in front, so take a look at the third equation. 
The third equation has a negative in front. That is a vertical reflection over the x-axis. Okay, going back to the first one, I also see that we have a plus 5 inside the parentheses. Plus 5 inside the parentheses moves the graph to the left. Remember, inside the parentheses is backwards crazy town, so plus 5 actually means left 5. Do you want to do the other right or left one while we're at it? Sure. If I look through here, we also have on the third one a minus 2. That one would be moving right 2. Okay, hint, each line has two x's. So my top equation is done because I've got two x's for the top equation. My third equation is done because I have two x's for that one. Second equation. First thing I see is there's a negative in front of the x. That negative in front of the x is a horizontal reflection across the y-axis. The plus 3 is a vertical movement, so up or down, and that one's normal, so that one is up. That equation is now done. The only equation that doesn't have two things right now is the last equation. And which column do I have to put the x into? Translation down, because that's the only one that's left. And that minus 7 does mean down 7. So helpful hint, two x's per line, one x per column. So if you get to a point where, like on the second equation, you don't know what that negative in front of the x does, if you're down to that, that last equation, that last box, do what you know and then fill in from there. Okay, that is it for the graphing video.